Uh, by marriage, uh, my family's been on this farm for seven generations, roughly. Uh, my parents were tobacco farmers. They grew up during the Depression. There was no jobs anywhere, so farming was it. You, you could make your living on farm, or, or you'd have to starve because there was nowhere else to go. Uh, I was born in Danville, but I was brought back here, and this is where I made my first steps. As a matter of fact, about 30 foot north of the old high barn we call up there. I stood up and made my first steps right there. And an average crop was anywhere from uh, 7 to 25 acres, and we, we grew up to 18 acres on several occasions. Uh, you had to have barn capacity for anything much larger than that. And it generally took four to six days to, to cure a cure and get it out of the barn, so if you went with much more acres, you are going to lose the tobacco before it was uh, the barns would open up to where you could put more in. Dad and Uncle, they always had a team of horses, and uh, the last team they had, they weighed a ton apiece. They were Clydesdale and Belgium Cross, and uh, one of them was an exceptional slide horse, as you call it, pulling the slides through the field as you pulled back. It. The, the puller on the left-hand side, when he would get so far ahead of the horse, the horse would walk up and stop, and that way you wouldn't have to lead the horse or anything. Uh, they were a beautiful team of horses. Uh, you always had to carry both of them to the field because they they would just uh, get very upset if you if you separated them. And so one was always tied somewhere inside of the field so that they could see each other. Back up to Danville, and um, in, in a lot of cases, uh, back then you had to take it off the stick and you graded it and you tied it in bundles and then you hung the bundles back on the stick and you packed it on the truck that way. And uh, it was always so pretty to be in the, to look at the pile of tobacco with those bundles sticking out. And uh, it was a lot of good memories. There was an old gentleman that worked at Hughes' warehouse. They called him Pap and he always wore a black suit and a black derby and a white shirt and he would lead the trucks in. And uh, future years, I found out that uh, he had been to, uh, to a dance in Carolina and got hit by a car, and that ended his life. But he was 90-some years old, and I never forgot that old gentleman. But uh, we would load the bike on a 51 forward two-ton truck and take off over there with that stuff, and, uh, and uh, no heater on the truck, and of course no air conditioning, and it, it was tough, you know, but we didn't know any different. What was tough times, because you, you grew up like that, you know? Uh, one time they was curing back and my dad and uncle used to stay with the barns all night and up there at the old high barn where I took my first steps a skunk got up there and the skunk went into the firebox and walked through those hot beds of coals and went into the flue pipe and was walking around the pipes and of course we had smokestacks outside well dad pulled the smokestack off so the skunk could get out but he turned around and went back. And he come back through those coals, a hot, hot bed of coals. When that skunk come out of there, he was glowing. I mean, he was burning. And uh, my uncle tried to kill him with a tobacco stick because the old thing was headed for another barn that had hay in it. And the skunk sprayed him and sprayed the dog, and it was just a mess. Grandma used about all of her tomato juice trying to get the smell off of, off of my uncle. But... Uh, yeah, it's been a lot of funny little things go off, you know. We had a tobacco strangle in the later years from 1968 on up, and we always plugged it up to an electric pole rather than a generator, and be a thunderstorm down in Spring Garden, and, and shock would come through the wires and shock everybody on the strangle. <laughs> of course, everybody was mad then <laughs> and scared too, but we kept on working, you know. Uh, it was a lot of enjoyment and a lot of things to laugh at today, but it was serious then. It was sad times then. <laughs>
but it was a family thing. We hired very little help later in years. We did hire one or two people uh, to kind of help out, especially after I went to work at, at a factory too. And uh, that did help a lot. But in the early years, it was all done by the family right here. Number one, I was raised around these old barns. Uh, when I was a baby, my mother used the barns basically a, as a playpen, because when you put you in the barn, you couldn't get over the door sill, so you played in that dirt, and, and that's all we ever did was play in the dirt. And uh, of course, the soot in some of the old barn pipes, yeah, I'd wind up getting in that, and I'd have black soot all over me, and it was just a pitiful looking situation. But uh, I can remember using rocks to, for, as a car or a tractor or something other, and you had a, each little rock was at each barn where we would play with. Um, I, I, I just I remember my family and the hard work that they put forth around these buildings to make a living, to make my life better as my life went on, and to give me a uh, decent clothes and good food and uh, a good home to live in and, and that's the barns are very special to me for that reason uh, they were your livelihood they rubbed their fingers in that mood mm -hmm. and <laughs> it kind of touches me you know when I see it think about the hard work they've done you can still see their fingerprints in there. Their prints are still here. Mm -hmm. I mean, right now, he's got me by the seat of the pants. Now, boy, you do this right. one that was moved from up next to Pinhook, right on the side of Route 40. And it's a small four-room barn. And as a matter of fact, three of that old tobacco slides is sitting here under the shed. And the stalk cutter sitting around here where we used to cut the stalks up with. And that's the old stalk cutter. And I've got movies of a team of horses cutting stalks with that. Mm. I think you do. Thanks. Yeah, that's it. No? That's the thing, right? That might be easier to pick up. It's, uh, back sometimes they would be putting some mortar around some of the uh, fire boxes and so forth. And my first cousin was down here from New York. She put her handprint right there in that one. And she's grown and got grandchildren now. But that was her little handprint right there. Oh. The original chestnut oak logs with her fire boxes still intact. The flue pipes are still in here where we used to run the flues around and go back out the stack. And the ones on the back always stayed, stayed hooked up and everything, but uh, to take care of them, not let them rust out too bad, we took them all up and hung them up on the tail poles. And this was the one where I got, they called me knothead because I've always run into the mm. tail poles. <laughs> but this is a five room barn which gave you one-fifth more capacity for tobacco. So this one was never converted? No. no this one, uh, uh, the last curing was 1983 in this barn. And it was done but with wood? Mm-hmm. Sure was. And you're talking about the finger for handprints, they're very plain right there on that wall. See right there? Yeah. So your dad and your uncle, and yep. they all did that? They did all of the dobbing, as they called it. Look at this. Hmm. Now, actually, this is the first building that was ever built on this plantation. Uh, this plantation had about 2,000 acres in it to begin with. And, of course, they had to have somewhere to live. This is it. We used to sit up there to the left of the old big house until 1866 when they finished that one and then they moved it down here. Mm 
And yes, I know, I need to do a lot of cleaning <laughs> That's a chestnut oak log too. And you look how pretty they are. Yeah. And you yeah, can't drive right. a nail in them. Mm. This little shed was about to fall down on, on the buggy here. So I came down here and was going to drive a, a nail through some timbers and nail it to the side and put a rafters up, hold the rafters up. No, nah, you weren't going to drive a nail in that thing. Look at that buggy. That is neat. That's the last one Granddaddy had. He rode that thing up to 54. He'd go to Chatham on the buggy. 1954. Oh, <laughs> There's somebody's name in there. Walker. Walker. 